Why do some articles never really take off while others get a ton of page views? Today I want to take you back to some of the basic principles of blogging, like how to get more traffic to each and every blog post we write. So I'm going to share with you some tactics, going to show you a little more advanced tip for Google that you can use when you're doing the topic research. And we will also dive into Google Analytics in a second and I'm going to show you a tip, some data that few people know exists and that very few people talk about. So in order to get access to this data that I'm going to show you in a second, you have to link your Google Analytics account and your Google Search Console account. If you don't know what these two are and what the difference is, I have a video about that here, so you can educate yourself a little bit on that. But link those two and there are multiple videos about that. And once you've done that from that timestamp and moving forward, you'll be able to get this data that I'm going to show you now. So this is the report I wanted to show you. You go into analytics, go to acquisition, search console, and you have a whole section here that's pulled from the search console data set into Google Analytics. And once they do that, you have this new column out here. It's the CTR column. It's click through rate, meaning of all the number of impressions, the times you showed up on a search in Google, how many times did people actually click? So for example, this first one here, 82,000 times you showed up in the Google search result and out of those you were clicked 983 times. So that means that 1.19% is the click through rate. And now let's dive down to this row here. This article here showed up 74,000 times and this one did also. But this one got double the amount of traffic because it got clicked 4.1% of the times it showed up, while this one was less than 2%. This is very, very cool data to have access to, and you don't get this column here with Search Console. And you need to dive into what's different with this article here. Maybe you just wrote a better title, and maybe there's just less competition. Or maybe you are ranking much lower for this one. See, it's ranking around an average of position 12. That means that you're on page number two in the search result. So of course you get less click. So you need to take into account here how old the article is, because if you publish it a month ago, it will definitely not have enough traffic yet for it to make sense. But what I want you to really dive into here is the articles that have the highest number of clicks. So you can sort here by CTR, click here, and now you will see the articles with the highest click through rate. And notice here how one of these here have quite a lot of impressions and it get clicked almost 11% of the times it showed up. So that's the perfect article here. So you're getting close to 3000 clicks to your site from only 25,000 impressions. Very cool data and nobody's looking at it because it's search console data that you need to link and get over here before you can even look at it. You can do so many other cool things here as well. You can sort by impressions instead and see where you have the most potential to write a better title, for example. See this one here, 150,000 times you showed up in the Google results page, but it was only clicked one and a half percent of the times. So or this one here, 145,000, but it gets clicked less than 1% of the time even though you're showing up on the first page of Google on average. So 900 clicks, that's not a whole lot from 145,000 times you showed up. So see if you could create a better title for an article like this here. There's also the possibility that these articles, these topics that have more traffic, whether it's a specific product you're talking about or what part of the news that gets more traffic when you write about it, that it's just because it's more popular. Maybe there are just more searches around it and people are just more interested in that. So in that case, you just need to keep writing more articles about that same product maybe and really dive into everything you can around that part of the niche. Later in this video, I'm also gonna talk a bit about how to figure out where there's most traffic in your niche because that's also super important and it's something that we just briefly touched upon here. So before we move on to the next tip here, hit the little like button if you like these tips. Now let's talk about something else you can do to ensure that the topics you end up choosing to write about on your site get more page views. So this has to do with the topic research itself when you're actually scouting for new areas of the niche and new topics to write about. When we're using the Google autocomplete method, we're typing sentences into Google and see what they suggest we uh, search for. 
there's a little tip there that I talked briefly about in the previous video and I want to dive a little bit more into that. So the thing is here, if you can sort of trigger this question from multiple angles, if you can start typing this question in multiple ways and sort of trigger it from different angles, and I'll show you in a second how to do that and what I mean by that, then it's a good indication that this topic has more traffic overall. Here's how we can do that and here's how it works. Let's have a look at this topic here. Do artificial grass needs watering? Pretty decent question. So let's see if we can trigger this in other ways. Um, should you water artificial grass? There we have it again. Should you water artificial grass? Do you water artificial grass? How often should you water artificial grass? That's already a clear indication that we have a good deal of traffic here. We could also try and just type watering artificial grass. Okay, that comes up as well. Now we have like four, five, six different ways it gets typed into Google on a regular basis. A very clear indication that we have a good deal of search traffic for this one here. So the trick here is really to figure out what are the main words in this topic here. So it's watering and it's also about artificial grass. So if you were to just type in these three words here in different ways, try to reorder them. For example, artificial grass, water. And then always try to put these little question words in the front. Do, do we water artificial grass? Should, should you water? Can you water artificial grass? So really try to focus on the essence of the sentence, the one, two, three words that make up the meaning. If you take out the word water here, it doesn't make sense. If you take out the word grass, it doesn't make sense. If you remove the word artificial, again, it doesn't make sense. You would just be talking in general about watering your grass. So those are probably the three words that need to be there. And then you can also see if you can replace one of them with a synonym. Artificial could probably also be asked like fake grass. Do fake, do you water fake grass? There you have it again. And I wouldn't care too much about including all these synonyms in the article itself. That's just not necessary anymore. Just write the best content. But for the topic research here, when you want to figure out if it's a big topic or a small one, you can try including them to see if you can trigger it in multiple ways. And this also makes a lot of sense if you are considering whether you should write an article that does have some competition. There's another article or two up there. Maybe they're pretty short, they're not on a big site, they're on a pretty new site, something that you could probably compete with. Maybe you could rank just next to them. Let's say you think you can rank number two, three or four in Google, and you see that this question gets asked from so many angles. Then you have a big media article with a lot of page views, and you should go for it, because if you can rank three or four, you'll still get traffic, and there's always a chance that you could actually beat them and be number one and get a ton of traffic. Remember, I've talked many times about how I want you to start a broad site. By that, I mean that you choose a domain name that can be used across a bigger part of the niche or that just has a bigger scope to it. Something like Nature Freak instead of skiing dude or whatever. So because then you can only talk about skiing. I want you to be able to branch into other sports if that's what you want to do. So by choosing a really broad domain name, you're able to do that. So how do you do that? How do you sort of figure out where these golden topics are? So first of all, try to figure out what are the most popular products in this niche. And you'll definitely see that there are already written a ton of reviews and best X for Y, but they may not have answered all the smaller questions people have. These what we call informational type articles. So try and identify a map of all the products, all the services people use, because that's where the money are with advertising and with affiliate links. Obviously you have to mention a product in order to have an affiliate link, right? But also the ads just pay way better if it's a product or a service. And then try to do your topic research around each and every of these products or these services. It could also be stores, or clubs or something like that, but something where people have to pay for a membership or somewhere they go to purchase stuff. So as soon as you have articles around these 
topics, you will make more money with ads. And you will also see more page views if you find these popular products and you sort of find these questions people have around those. So now that you have a list of these products and these services and ways and places people can shop and everything you can think about, then you want to start writing around each and every of these bigger products. But first you need to dive into the topic research and dive deep in there and see if you can trigger it from multiple angles and see if there's enough articles that you can write about that hasn't been written well, because if you cannot compete, it doesn't really make sense. Then just move on to the next product and see if there are any openings. And then try to write at least 15 to 20 articles around each of these products or services to build what we call topical relevance with Google. You need to show Google that you know what you're talking about. So if you just have one article about this product, one article about this other product, and one about this service and this other service, you're not really showing Google that you are an expert on anything. So you need to dive somehow deep into each of these by writing 15 or 20 articles. And then over time, Google will let you in if you are targeting questions and aspects that don't have a lot of competition. These are what I call underserved topics. You'll just rank much faster if you write a bunch of articles. As Google will see you more of an expert sooner. And then just give it time. You need to wait at least half a year. And that's the boring part about what we do here. We always have to wait and be so patient because Google take a long time before they rank our stuff and send traffic to an article. That's just how it is. But give yourself the best possible conditions to succeed with your site by building out these small clusters or groups of articles. And then you will just have more data to look at after half a year or a full year because you will have maybe five little groups of articles around specific products and services, preferably, where the money is good and you'll try to see where can you find the most traffic per article. Again, give this video a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.